Hello fellow misfortunates, this is how to play Vayne like a challenger. Vayne is a very interesting champion because unlike most others, she doesn't rely on getting fed early on in order to dominate the late game. Merely staying alive and getting lane experience and some minion gold is more than enough to carry because you simply have so much damage in your abilities. Regardless, our challenger player here is taking full advantage of Leona's engages and you shouldn't be afraid to do that either. As long as your enemies are locked down and have no opportunity to retaliate, even weak laners like Vayne can take a free follow-up like this. However, there is a reason your laning with Vayne is not exactly the strongest and you should definitely keep that in mind. Vayne's range is only average and her abilities are entirely all-in focused and your most important damage spell W won't do all that much without any attack speed items. Vayne typically gets bullied quite hard in lane, as she has nothing with which she could match poke spells coming from the opposing ADC or their support. So what do you do then? Well, you take as much farm as you realistically can while avoiding the enemy, and only participate in actual PvP situations when they allow you to play to your champion's strengths. Amumu got caught trying to ward the river here, and Vayne and Leona were able to go all in before Aphelios even had the chance to help his ally. Especially with Press the Attack, Vayne's best keystone in my opinion, your early game burst damage is way higher than most enemies would expect from a late game champion like this. Yes, I've just told you that your objective with Vayne in the early game is merely to survive, but picking up first blood here will go a long way, because, well, spoiler, our challenger player's teammates will be pretty much useless in this match when it comes to actually dealing damage. However, keep in mind that getting random early kills like that might be a nice bonus, but it is absolutely not necessary for your overall game plan when you play Vayne. Realistically speaking, the enemy will occasionally manage to punish you when you go for your minion kills, and going for all-in plays with low health will be quite risky for you. With Vayne in the early game, it is better to err on the side of caution. And you also better expect to get bullied by everyone. All five enemies will try to delay your godlike late game as much as possible. After level 6 though, the entire dynamic of your lane changes as Vayne has the biggest level 6 power spike out of all AD carries. Yeah, just one opening is all our challenger player needs to take full advantage of this crazy skirmishing tool. If you have made it this far into your Vayne game, then you've already survived the worst part. From here you better get ready to pop off. But before you can do that, we also have to talk about Vayne's item build of course. Our challenger player typically goes for a full crit build with shield bow and rage blade. In this game specifically, they also bought wit's end because the enemies have picked Cassiopeia and Rise for their solo laners. However, beyond its magic resist component, wit's end is an amazingly strong AD carry item in general right now, and even more so when your champion synergizes with on-hit playstyles to begin with. In my opinion, you can buy this item on Vayne every game, but just keep in mind that our challenger player here typically goes without it. Okay, so how do you play teamfights in the mid game? Well, pretty much like this. Yes, all you have to do is to play front to back, attacking only the closest targets and allowing your allies to peel for you. It doesn't exactly matter who this closest target is, since not even the biggest tanks can withstand your damage. So staying as safe as possible is your number one priority. Anyway, despite getting some nice picks here and there, blue team is actually at a huge disadvantage right now. The biggest indicator of this is their mid lane tower difference. When you lose your mid lane tower and the enemy gets to keep theirs, the enemy automatically gets full control over Dragon, Rift Herald and later Baron. The reason for this is that the minions are constantly on your side of the map granting the enemy free vision, while their mid lane tower also prevents you from invading their jungle. In a rather desperate attempt to draw level with the enemy, Vayne's jungler even feeds them a free kill. Brute forcing your way through a game in this fashion simply doesn't work. You have to first win a teamfight, and then take the objective afterwards while your opponents are still dead and cannot contest you for it. 
Especially when playing Vayne, being proactive only works if you can force an enemy into a 1 vs 1 situation, while you absolutely know for sure that there are no other enemies nearby that could come to their help. For the most part, you should stick to a reactive playstyle, and simply follow up with your enormous DPS when one of your teammates catches an opponent with their crowd control, or even vice versa. Then you have full permission to go wild. Take note how even despite the fact our Vayne here stayed in the back, only attacking the closest target, the enemies still tried their hardest to focus her down. You are simply that big of a threat, and this is where you 100% have to rely on shield bow and your defensive positioning. Vayne deals a lot of damage, but a dead Vayne deals zero damage. In that team fight, Vayne was able to collect some valuable shutdown gold, but blue team also got severely weakened. After taking so much damage yourself, you are not in a position to greet for objectives, but instead are forced to retreat and click the subscribe button. Anyway, would you like to have a guess how Vayne ended up in the following checkmate situation? If your guess involved mid lane tower difference, then you are correct. It is really that bad, and more often than not will you end up overextended without knowing, simply because the enemy will have so much map pressure and free vision control. In this game, the weight of the entire team is on Vayne's shoulders, and her being dead straight up gives Red Team a free Baron. The situation is getting much worse because of that, since instead of potentially breaking even in terms of mid lane towers, Red Team is likely to put their Baron minions to use and push for Blue Team's inhibitors. Our challenge of Vayne player, however, is having none of that. Just a beautiful showcase of Vayne's playmaking potential with good mechanics. Amumu ends up failing his bandage toss, but even if he didn't, Vayne was prepared to flash it anyway. The reason that play worked out this time is that Vayne saw all of her opponents on the map and therefore knew that none of them could have sneaked behind her. And yes, they finally took down that mid lane tower. By accelerating her late game power spikes like this while at the same time getting rid of the opposing Baron buffs, Vayne was able to instantly make up for her mistake and she can now meet the enemy on even ground again. And this time it is the enemy's AD carry who ends up overextended. Take good note of how Vayne instantly switches targets as Amumu approaches her instead of tunnel visioning on the low health Aphelios. This is exactly the concept you need to keep in mind if you too want to get these amazing teamfights. Always attack the closest target and only the closest target, no matter what. Now that Vayne has taken down all 5 enemies, her team is free to destroy the opposing towers uncontestedly. The enemies do start to respawn soon after, but since they died one by one, they also respawn one by one. Due to their delayed respawn timers, the enemy couldn't group, which means Vayne can take them down again and ultimately destroy the Nexus. Now playing the lane phase with Vayne is especially difficult, but if you want to make it easier for yourself, you can refresh your general ADC laning skills by clicking the link on your screen right there.